I mean, now this is a cool case. Where are we? Here's the clue. Anyone recognize this? Black salivary gland? Or yes, a salivary gland. Very good. And in particular, a minor salivary gland. It's a small little lobule, and it's got mucin-filled, you know, goblet cell type cells. And then that's what these uh, these guys are here. This is a mucin-filled. And then right here, we see salivary ducts, which are double layer of columnar um, uh, cells. And so it kind of is a little bit similar to sweat glands, right? Except that sweat glands don't have mucin-filled cells in them. And also the duct of a sweat gland is more like double cuboidal, not double columnar, but depends on where you are in the salivary gland. There can be similarities. So, so it'll look basically if you're, you know, derm path and you've not seen much oral path, you think, you know, if it looks kind of like a sweat gland, but, but weird, think about minor salivary gland if there's mucin-filled there. Or if it looks like a sweat gland, but a little weird, think about breast tissue. That's another thing too. Breast tissue, if you have a small, like a little bit of accessory breast tissue in the axilla, it'll look kind of like a weird sweat gland and sweat duct, but not quite right. Pathologists usually are gonna be quicker to recognize that if they've had path training, because they've seen a lot of breast tissue and oral path uh, stuff. So in any case, so we're kind of in the mouth here. If I recall, this was actually a cheek nodule, a deep cheek nodule. And when they took it out, or, or maybe, I'm sorry, it was lip. Um, lip nodule, and so it was kind of deeper down uh, a mass. I think they thought it was a cyst or some sort of tumor, and they removed it, and so they took out some of the muscle of the lip here around it. See, that's another clue where we are, skeletal muscle there. So what is going on here? Is this a tumor or is something else? It's weird, isn't it? I think it's quite pretty, though. Look at that pattern. Isn't that wild? Anyone know what's going on? Don't worry, if you're wrong, I'll edit it out. I feel like it's inflammatory more. Inflammatory, good. Yes, it is. It's a inflammatory reactive process, not a neoplasm. But it's so cellular, you could think of a neoplasm. Who, uh, what was the other comment? Indeed. These are really robust granulomas. That's what's happening. These are, this is an amazing example of when we say palisaded granuloma. That's palisading, right? But this is not one of the palisaded granulomatous disease processes like rheumatoid nodule or anything. But the same process that we've got a, a bunch of histiocytes, which are epithelioid to spindled, pale nuclei, abundant, dense pink uh, cytoplasm, right? And they're lined up around some stuff. And there are some scattered multinucleated giant cells. Look at that whole huge giant cell, all those nuclei all in one cell. And then in the middle, instead of, you know, like in, in a lot of infectious granulomas, in, in a lot of infectious granulomas, I don't know why I have trouble saying that, we'll see like pink necrosis in the middle, but we don't have pink stuff. We have blue stuff here. Looks like almost gooey like mucin. Why would we have like tons of little mucin filled areas surrounded by granuloma? Or is it not mucin? Is it something else? Is it filler? It is filler, filler in fact. Very good. One other thought you could think is like a ruptured mucosil, but ruptured mucosils, the mucin doesn't look like it's not this dense and blue. And I've ne and I've seen like granulomatous stuff with them, but never like this. It's always like loose, slightly bubbly, foamy, mucin filled histiocytes vaguely around a, an area of ruptured um, ruptured dilated salivary duct, but I've never seen these like incredibly tight palisaded foreign body type granulomas like this. I don't know if someone watches this online and said they've seen otherwise, please educate me, but I don't see tons of mucosils, but anyway. So um, yeah, this is filler and what type of filler? You know, there's a lot of different fillers and the best way to know is the history, but this is the one filler that I think is pretty recognizable actually, because it looks like something that naturally occurs in our body. 
lactic acid. Exactly. It looks blue like myxoid or the type of dermal mucin we see, which is hyaluronic acid. And this is injected hyaluronic acid filler where the patient's body has had a massive granulomatous host response. And I don't know why this patient had this host response. I Someone asked me that they're like, this filler always produce this kind of reaction? My guess is no. I would imagine that many types of filler produce some degree of reaction, but I think the only ones I ever see are the ones where the reaction has become problematic and then it gets removed because it's made a nodule or a mass. So I don't have a real sense of like what normal filler result looks like microscopically because people don't go biopsy that, right? So as pathologists, we only get to see what people sample for us. So yeah, this person for some reason had a dramatic um, granulomas reaction. And um, I, uh, to my recollection, the, the history of filler was not presented at the time. And only later, you know, with further questioning, it turned out, yeah, they had had some filler injection and it, it migrated a little bit and got a nodule of granuloma around it. So it's always kind of satisfying when we find this without the history. And we're like, oh, this has been injected filler and go and find the patient history. And so in this case, yeah, this was in you know, hyaluronic acid. And I also thought it's interesting, why does the body respond to hyaluronic acid? We have hyaluronic acid, but I don't understand the whole process, but I'm, I, uh, my thought is that, or I thought someone told me that the hyaluronic acid, is it, is it produced either synthetically or is it, is it bovine? Does it, do any of you guys know, any of you derms know? You can have different options, you can have both. Yeah, but I'm, I'm imagining it's not human-based, right, since, you know, how a how would you extract it from humans but in any yeah. case even though it's the same kind looks like the same stuff that we have in our body since it is made exogenously i'm guessing that sometimes some of the proteins that show up in there uh stimulate our immune system in in undesirable ways so i just thought it was incredible example of foreign body granuloma where we can still see i mean look at that palisade swoon if you don't like that i can't make you happy guys dr gardner i'm pretty sure People are also allergic to, this is not our surgery test recently, but the albumin in oh. Botox, even though it's human derived. Interesting. Um, which is really odd too. I thought, I got it wrong because I was like, well, albumin is like a naturally occurring thing in the body. We like replace albumin all the time yeah. with cirrhotic patients, but apparently that's like a known allergen in Botox injections. That's fascinating. Thank you so much for, uh, for educating me about that. The immune system is a, a wild and weird thing. But anyway, I thought I, that's a case that is quite memorable and I thought was really amazing to see. Um, that's a, probably the best filler reaction that I've seen in my career. And I know my dear fellows like to point out that I'm always saying this is the best case ever. And I am guilty of that. But also when I say that, you've got to admit, it's a pretty cool case. It may not be the best ever, but it's good. But um, subtlety is something I've never been known for, so. And I know you're all laughing with your mute buttons on, so 